Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for today's video we are starting no makeup because I'm gonna be doing my makeup with you guys while we chat I'm gonna be answering some of your guys's questions um, I about a week ago asked on my community tab if you guys had any questions you guys wanted me to answer I know I have quite a few new people on here so I wanted to kind of do a fun little chatty get ready with me and answer some of your top questions while we get ready. I'm probably not gonna be talking about the products very much, but you will see me using them and I will link everything I'm using down below. I am actually getting ready for an event tonight. Um, it's very rare that we have influencer events in Iowa, but I do have one tonight and I'm really excited So I'm gonna do some fun glam just like my typical glam look with you So I did already apply my elf power grip primer. I do need to prime my eyes though I like to do my eyeshadow first typically when I'm getting ready So the event I'm going to tonight is at a boutique kind of thing It's called the vinyl studio in Iowa and they have such cute clothes. So they're having a little I guess influencer event. Um, I'm curious to see who's all going to be there. I feel like I know a decent amount of the Iowa influencers since there's not very many of us, so I'm excited for that. They're going to have some fun photo ops, shopping, giveaways, and snacks and drinks, so it should be a good time. I'm bringing one of my best friends with me too. So getting into the questions here, I'm going to start with the ones that have the most thumbs up. So the first question we're going to start out with, I did get the question, how do you get the motivation to film so much content? And it said you are my favorite influencer so sweet of you that makes me so happy um you guys know i i upload pretty often on my channel i feel like more than the usual i know everyone right now is uploading almost daily just because it is vlogmas time but i feel like i've always been very consistent on my channel i've never really taken a break or anything like that or gone a long time without uploading something and I think honestly the main reason is just because I truly do love what I do. I get excited to film, I get excited to check out what's out there and I think like you have to love the niche you're in if you're kind of just doing something just because it's popular or it seems to get views but you don't actually truly love it then yeah you're gonna get burnt out pretty quickly. I feel like in the past years I've kind of been back and forth on trying to figure out like what I want to do on my channel, what is my main thing. Um, I know for a while I feel like my identity was like TJ Maxx videos, which is kind of silly, but now I've just kind of branched out more and kind of learned to find myself and be myself and do what makes me happy and putting my own kind of spin on things. I feel like this year and last year I've really delved into more of like the hygiene content, perfumes and fragrance and stuff like that and shared it more on my channel because um, I love bringing that to the table. I don't want to be like just about makeup. Um, I'm kind of in the whole space of beauty just going over everything since I feel like that kind of stuff is still included in beauty and I've added that more into my channel because honestly I love it. Like I've done Bath and Body Works videos since I started. Like that was kind of the beginning and then I kind of switched into like fun unboxings, makeup and that kind of stuff but I just finally feel like I kind of have my thing down. Um, I love bringing you guys the Bath and Body Works stuff, hygiene, perfume stuff here and there, and of course the makeup. I've been doing a lot of ColourPop reviews too because I seriously love their stuff. And like if I'm getting it in PR, like why not just go ahead and review them all, you know? <laughs> so that's what keeps me motivated is just enjoying what I'm doing. And I love going out and about and basically shopping for fun. Like you guys know, I film a lot of what's new content, which isn't for everyone. And I'm not trying to say like with these videos, you have to go out and buy all these things. I just love seeing what's out there. And most of the time I'm window shopping myself. I'm not buying all that stuff. Sometimes I feel kind of weird about like promoting, like spending and stuff like that, but it's really not what I'm trying to do. I just have such a love for seeing what's new out there and new products, product design, packaging, finding the best of the best things so I can recommend it to you guys. So I feel like that was such a long way to answer this question, but that is how I get the motivation. Literally just finding stuff that I love to watch and I love to film. I did get, this question had quite a few thumbs up. Is it hard to have other girlfriends as a content creator? I'm asking from the POV that as a creator with a channel, you're typically a main character. Does that spill over and cause friction with your friendships? So I'm assuming you're assuming my friendships like not on YouTube and just like 
my friendships in general life that I've had. I will be quite honest with you, I am not a main character, <laughs> I feel like, outside of YouTube. I do not have main character energy. I am extremely reserved, shy, I like to be in the background. So I have no issues with this. And honestly, a lot of my friends, I get along way better with people who are very talkative because I really don't talk a lot. I'm a great listener, um, so I feel like I can get along with more people who are more energetic, outgoing, Going very talkative in that way because it has what I'm kind of lacking and then we just kind of our differences kind of mesh together in a way I feel like how I am on here is how I am in real life too I try to be genuine genuinely relatable but I I really do have social anxiety I'm super shy anxious so I guess maybe that doesn't come off on camera but I feel like it kind of does in a way because I don't do a lot of these chatty videos as you guys notice I talk more about products I have great product knowledge but I feel like I don't have like fun stories to share, um, like story times and a whole lot to say on opinions on things. So I feel like I definitely lack in that area due to my anxiety. And I can get very down on myself about that and think that, you know, I could be so much more and I'd probably get more views if I was more outgoing, but that's just not how it is. And I mean, I'm grateful for the people that do come back and still watch my videos. So I mean, I can't be that bad at this, I guess, if I still have people that come back. But I feel like, in the online space and in the beauty space, it's a little bit harder, I feel like, to make genuine connections just because you never know if someone is using you, taking advantage. Because I feel like kind of a lot of people are in this for themselves and, you know, they want to do good and they don't really care about anyone else. Some people are like that. Um, but I've honestly found a lot of great people in the, like, I would say self-care community, the bath and body works community is so nice, so uplifting. The like body care, hygiene, self-care community I feel like has been a lot more supportive to me than even the beauty community. So there's that. I mean, I guess maybe it's just because I've been more involved in that community as well. But basically to answer your question, I definitely don't think it's hard um, to keep my friendships in my personal life as a content creator. Okay, this question actually had tons of thumbs up on it. It's probably the most thumbs up, which is surprising, but it is, what is something you want for Christmas? So both my families, we still do like Christmas lists and stuff just cause I don't know, I, it's hard to know what to get people. So like my husband's family, they'll send me a list. My family always wants like a list just to kind of have some ideas on what to get. I'm trying to think of what I put on my list. Honestly, I just kind of put some random useful things on there. I know I need new cookware for sure. Mine is so old. I need to get a new set. So I think I put that on there. I put some like Lululemon leggings on my list too. I haven't had Lululemons in such a long time, but I figured I would ask for them for Christmas. I put on a little carry-on roller bag as well. I want a new one because I've been using more carry-on luggage for my trips rather than like my big luggage. So I also asked for that because I do a lot of traveling. And then I think I asked for like some of the Sephora perfume samplers as well to try some new fragrances. So, you know, just kind of the things I really enjoy. And I like to ask for, you know, some stuff that's pretty useful. So those are just some of my things that are on my Christmas list this year. So I'm sorry if I like don't look at the camera in this video. I'm so bad with eye contact when I'm filming. Like I just kind of go on a tangent and I'm not really paying attention to what I'm looking at. I just kind of look around. So I know that bothers some people, but that's just how it is here. Like I'm just talking to you guys straight up. Um, it's sometimes weird to look at the camera, I feel like, so I don't really stare directly into it. Um, okay, so next question here is, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel and what keeps you coming back to it despite barriers? Um, so starting my channel, honestly, I have been one of the probably oldest YouTuber, beauty YouTubers that is still left on the platform. I started way, way back when I was in college I, for cosmetology school. Uh, I started watching YouTube videos in just my free time because it kind of started slowly popping off then. I would love watching different like hair tutorials. Not so much like the makeup yet, but I got into like nail polish collections, things like that. Um, then I started following like Ellen Blair Fowler, which were the first OG 
beauty people here on the platform that were huge um, and they always did a bunch of MAC hauls and MAC makeup looks and so then I like went to, wanted to go to the MAC store and stuff like that and I was like this is kind of cool like let me try to make a video I think my first video not my old ones are not on here because like I said I've come a long ways. I used to be extremely shy and I just feel like those really old videos were extremely awkward. I was super shy and I would be so embarrassed if like someone actually found that that I was doing these videos that knew me because it wasn't a thing back then. It was so new and I just felt like that would be horrible if someone I knew found out about my channel but I love doing it and I love to like do little MAC hauls, Lush hauls, Bath and Body Works things even way back then. So I just kind of tried it out and went for it. I didn't upload nearly as much as I do now, just here and there. And I had so much fun with it. And what keeps me coming back to it, I mean, this is my full-time job now, so I don't really see myself leaving because I love it so much. There's really not that much, I guess, bad things besides number one. Um, you know, if you get mean comments here and there, but... They don't usually bother me these days. I just kind of move on from it. It's like, okay, it might upset me for five seconds and then, you know, delete, block, whatever. Rude comments can be annoying, but I mean, that's easily avoidable, just deleting stuff. Competition is probably the one thing that sucks on the platform, I feel like. It really sucks the fun out of everything. For me, is just feeling like you have to be first at everything. Especially with like makeup reviews and stuff like that. It can be very annoying if you don't upload like the first day Then no one's gonna watch it basically because it won't be Searchable only like the first people are gonna come up that got it done um, So that kind of takes the fun out of everything. I feel like comparison and competition Definitely is probably the worst thing I think about being on social media and then the other thing I guess that would be a barrier is that you're always thinking about work, which is with any business owner is like you kind of it's hard to put your phone down and I can struggle with that a lot as well. But I feel like the benefits far way out the difficulties. So it's pretty easy for me to come back, I would say. All right, this is a fun one. Uh, what was your favorite makeup collab released this year? So I'm assuming you mean like a collab with like a show or something? I don't know if you meant like an influencer collab, but I would say, ooh, I have to think about this. I'm gonna have to give it to ColourPop because they're kind of the queens of collabs and they do a lot of Disney collabs, which I'm a sucker for. And I definitely think that this year's Hocus Pocus collab that ColourPop did was seriously out of this world. It was such good quality overall. I love the look I did with this and the colors are so vibrant and so fun. Plus, ColourPop's fairly affordable. So this has to be my favorite collab and they've done a lot of really good ones, but definitely the third Hocus Pocus installment is definitely a winner. It's definitely the best of the other two that they had and I really just had fun with this and enjoyed it so much this year. So that's probably my favorite collab. If I was gonna pick my favorite influencer collab, I'm gonna have to give it to Heather on. Austin and Adept because oh my goodness that palette was so unique and stunning. Adept just has an amazing formula and their shimmers are incredible. I'm going to pop up a photo but yeah she had my favorite influencer and brand collab this year for sure. It's such a stunning palette and I feel like so many people really loved that one. I did a whole video on it if you guys want to check it out but it's just it's so unique and gorgeous. Next question is, what's a favorite Christmas tradition that you like to do every year? I guess my favorite tradition, honestly, I love the Christmas time, especially with Bath & Body Works videos. Candle day, body care day, and then probably my favorite of all, semi-annual sale. Always a tradition to go the day after Christmas, no matter what. Like, I can never take a vacation during December because of all these things going on. But I don't know if that's really a tradition. I feel like I don't really have traditions per se I feel like my, my family never really did like fun Christmas traditions um, my husband's family though I feel like they do a little bit more and something I love that they do is they always do a little fondue party the Saturday after Christmas and it's like my favorite thing fondue is so good with all the little pots of oil and then you put your meat in 
and it kind of boils in there. I always look forward to it every year. It's delicious and we get to have good family time, play some cards and stuff like that. So I just really enjoy that. His family definitely has a lot more traditions and it is really fun and it makes the holidays super special. Next question, what is your favorite music genre, underrated fragrance that you love? So my favorite music genre, this is so hard. I love so much music, but I will admit, I've been loving country music lately really into Morgan Wallen Hardy mostly because my husband also listens to it and we went to Morgan Wallen and Hardy concert this year and I just absolutely loved it I just loved the whole vibe of country music and we went to Nashville this year which is like the hometown of country music and that was so cool but I think overall though I do like more upbeat, fun music, so I'll have to say pop, just because that's what I've loved for the longest, and that's what I typically listen to on the daily. I love the Spotify playlist, Pop Rising. I listen to that all the time. I don't even make my own playlist. I just listen to Pop Rising because I always love finding new songs and new music, and Pop Rising um, station always has some of the best. So pop is always my favorite just because it's really fun, upbeat. You kind of get some more songs that you can dance to. But I do love me some country and I honestly I love a lot of different genres so it's hard to pick but pop is probably number one and then an underrated fragrance that I love let me think on this one because I have to think what would be underrated I'm gonna have to say just because I feel like this fragrance has been getting a lot of flack lately it's the Prada Paradox fan uh, I almost said foundation fragrance I think it's amazing. I love it. I know it smells like so many other scents put together, but it's so good and I keep reaching for it and I think it's such a nice, warm, kind of spicy scent for fall. And yeah, a lot of reviews I've seen, a lot of people just think it's boring, but I personally love it and can't get enough. Next question is, how do you deal with celebrating holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas with both of you and your husband's families, but make it fair? My husband and I can't seem to figure out how to split the time fairly. This is a really good question. Let's say for Christmas, pretty much we always do Christmas Eve with um, my family. My husband will do Christmas Day with his family, and it just kind of works out because my family is just very flexible. But I'll give you another example. My sister-in-law... Uh, hers is a little bit more complicated and this year she's starting to do every other so they'll have this Christmas with us next year um, with her other side of the family and we'll just celebrate it on Christmas Eve basically on the ones that she can't be there so you could see if you could do every other and rotate it can be difficult especially when you get into more <laughs> larger families adding in more in-laws and stuff like that and then kids and all this so I know it can be very difficult so mine is pretty easy so far but uh, we definitely have to do now the switcheroo with the every other Tessa has a fun question this is what is your dream vacation that you haven't taken yet she actually has two questions we'll answer this one first my dream vacation right now, I really want to go to the Netherlands, visit um, Amsterdam, because that is where my ancestors are from, basically. And I just, I really want to go and see what it's like. I think I'm going to love it there. I live in a little Dutch town, so I just want to see what it's like, if how it compares. I think it looks beautiful. I love all the little canals, the windmills, the food, and I think I would thrive there. So, <laughs> honestly, that's my dream vacation. I'm trying to convince my husband. He's not excited excited as I am. I don't know why he gets so nervous about like leaving the country. I don't know. It might be because he's such a picky eater and stuff like that. But I'm gonna, we're gonna go sometime. I'm gonna make him go. I really want to do like an entire Europe trip. Um, like a month long trip I think would be so cool or just a couple of weeks and visit a few different places um, but the Netherlands is definitely my number one right now. And then she also asked what would your perfect day consist of? This is such a hard question. I would say I want like a relaxing day. I love good old weekends when I get to relax and like watch my shows, watch a movie. I love organizing stuff, organizing my room. Um, so I would say maybe just like a relaxing, chill day where I just get to, you know, sit down on the couch, me and my husband watch a show together, and then like we go out of town to go out for dinner or something. I love going out to dinner like in Des Moines and stuff in Iowa. That seems pretty boring, but 
<laughs> I don't know. That just seems like a fine day to me. And then speaking of my husband, how did you and your husband meet? Tell us a little about him. Well, he's not usually on my channel very much. As you guys notice, he does not like to be on YouTube, which is totally fine. I don't want to make him do anything that he doesn't want to do. Uh, he's pretty shy and reserved, just like me. He absolutely loves cars. His whole family is into cars, old cars, hot rods, stuff like that. He also is really into his aquarium. We have a saltwater aquarium in our house um, that he takes care of. That's his thing. He really loves that and he's very outdoorsy. We got a little jet bow, um, he loves working on that and taking it out. He's super handy, he can fix literally anything. He's the best, super calm and chill. I am the opposite, where I get really wound up, really upset, so we kind of bounce each other out. We're the same age, we're actually high school sweethearts. We don't really have an exciting story, we just kind of met um, hanging out with different friend groups in our town. We have a very small town, so we know mostly everyone here. We were hanging out in a huge group. Um, he got his number from someone else because he liked me and he thought I was pretty, so he texted me like the next day. I think we met up at a volleyball game. Uh, it was my school versus his school. We have two schools where I'm from that are rivals, but yeah, that's basically it. And then we started dating, and we've been together since, 2008 so quite a while I got asked do you still model and what company was it for and then I also had some questions I think about if I have another job besides YouTube but yes so I have been modeling for a clothing boutique that's located near me um, called the pulse boutique I used to work there full-time for a bit with social media um, and then I just went part-time and now I just model for them maybe once or twice a week so it's not too much but it's just enough um, that gets me away out of the house and kind of doing something different, having more social time um, with some of my coworkers as well. They're all super great over there, and I love their clothes. So they're the best. I've never done modeling before. That was just a random gig I got because I knew someone that worked there. And I would always post like pictures of my outfits on my Instagram page. And I feel like I'm like I have a nice smile, I think. <laughs> so I don't know, I kind of just like learned how to do it, learned some fun poses, and now I think I'm decent at it. I model their size large, and we also have like a size like extra small model. Um, so basically it was really cool because it was one of the first boutiques to kind of do that. Not a lot of boutiques will show it on someone with maybe a larger body. I was a little bit uncomfortable to do it at first, but now I really love it. and. Yeah, they're really the best company to work for. I know I get questions if they'll be getting plus size, and I don't know. They've been trying to add on sizes, but so hard in the boutique world. So far, we've gone up to a double XL, and they've been doing some custom stuff, but I don't know if they do plan to do plus size eventually or All not. Right. I'm about to put lashes on. I'm waiting for these to dry, so let me answer a few questions. I feel like I'm behind here. Um, what's your favorite holiday song? This is such a hard one, too. Uh, I like more, I guess pop holiday i also really like ariana grande's christmas songs as well so i don't really have a favorite i just have kind of a genre i like and i like to find new ones as well what is your favorite skincare brand or hygiene brand um a skincare brand i will say probably la roche posay i use a lot of their stuff and i feel like it's really good for the skin you can find it like at target i use their cleanser they have a nice balm that's really good for the skin as well for repairing the barrier and they just have some really good products so they've been like number one for me as far as like hygiene goes I just love Bath & Body Works, really, for hygiene, I will say, is my number one. This is a good one. Do you have recommendations for someone that wants to start a YouTube channel, camera advice? What do you use to edit your videos? Do you use microphones or lights? So, yes. Um, if you are wanting to start a channel, it's hard because all these things do add up, and you don't necessarily want to be spending all this money if you know or don't know if it's something that you want to do or not. So you kind of have to like test it out. I wouldn't splurge on all that stuff. I would say maybe get a decent camera. You can film on your iPhone, but it doesn't have the best sound. But a good starting camera that I like to use as well for when I'm out and about vlogging, you can use it to film videos too, is the Canon G7X. I have the Mark II version from them. Um, that's a good starter camera. 
it's still expensive like all this stuff is just expensive so it's just hard to splurge um, but if you're really sure about it, you think it's something you want to do yeah then go for the Canon um, if you really are getting into it you're starting to gain some traction and you've maybe earned some money to put towards some extra stuff you can upgrade your camera I use the DSLR camera to film these sit-down videos uh, I use the Canon 90D for that and I do have like a lens I buy I'll have to link I'll link all of my camera equipment that I use on my Amazon store and I do use a big ring light behind me and I have two soft boxes on each side and I do have a microphone over here to catch my sound otherwise the focusing noise is annoying and this, the microphone just sounds better so there's a lot that goes into it but you definitely don't want to be buying all that stuff I would say until you start getting some traction and start making some money and then you want to upgrade then I would do that but if you're just starting I would recommend investing in just one of the vlogging cameras to get started and then to edit I use Final Cut Pro to edit if you have a Mac you can use iMovie which is free but I really enjoy Final Cut Pro it's a little bit more advanced whenever I can't figure something out I can just google it and there's usually a video on how to do something Another question is, do you like to read? If so, what do you enjoy reading? So funny, I actually just got back into reading like towards the end of this year, um, mostly because on TikTok, everyone was raving about these Colleen Hoover books. So I'm like, I need to check these out. So I was going on a camping trip just a very small weekend trip and I wanted some stuff to do so I went to Barnes & Noble and I bought a bunch of her books. I seem to like love stories it seems like so that's kind of my main thing and yeah I've been reading quite a bit. I mean I feel like I've fallen off a bit lately because I've been super busy but I definitely want to get back into reading. But those Colleen Hoover books were just so good and I just forgot how fun it is to get lost in a book and just how relaxing it is and you can just kind of escape real life for the time being which I do that a lot with TV shows as well but I definitely have been getting more into reading than I used to because I probably hadn't touched a book before last time was probably on my honeymoon so <laughs> it's been a minute but I do really enjoy it and I need to find more stuff to read but I seem to like romance stuff but I need to find some more interesting topics as well and then this question any advice for someone wanting to get into YouTube and social media um YouTube I would say is honestly it's not growing super fast right now the main areas right now are I would say TikTok easier to grow there so maybe start out there because it's easier to go viral and I feel like a lot of brands are just noticing more people on TikTok these days but if you do want to start YouTube just know it is a very slow process right now to kind of get views up and now we've been seeing more of the short form content here as well so things are definitely changing but to get started really just you just have to get in and dive right into it there's nothing I can really I don't know help you with getting started I will link a video I did down below answering questions about YouTube and how you get started but you just kind of have to dive right in make a couple practice videos but you know it doesn't hurt to try that's for sure but definitely I would maybe start out and put more effort into I would say TikTok or even Instagram reels have been popping off lately because it's gonna be way easier to get viewed on there this question is interesting it's from Anna Marie and she says how do you always have money to spend on products as I know your job as a content creator is to go out and shop and show us and talk about the products I know the products can get expensive buying daily or weekly even with sales by the way I love your videos thank you so I do make quite a bit of shopping content here on the channel as you guys know but not necessarily am I actually buying stuff every single time like maybe I'm buying a couple things here and there when I'm doing these fun shop with me videos I'm always trying to get sales deals anywhere I go I do spend a lot I guess on like Sephora makeup Ulta Bath and Body Works usually Bath and Body Works I can get coupons with but this is a business, so I'm taking money out of my business. It's not necessarily coming out of like my regular earnings and stuff like that, but you definitely do, it seems like. If you want to do 
this kind of a topic talking about new releases you do have to spend money to make money which is annoying but it's kind of like a business investment but you don't want to overdo it either because I've definitely gone overboard buying products for the channel even when I wasn't even getting hardly any views and making hardly any money and that's definitely not a good way to start now I'm definitely making more than I'm spending for sure but I definitely try but I still tried to kind of watch what I'm doing making sure I'm buying stuff that I'm gonna be reviewing for the channel and not just like gonna be decluttering in a couple of months finding stuff I'm actually interested in. and I feel like I haven't been spending quite as much even though it may seem like it with all my content being about the new releases most people are that do this do have multiple streams of income like you make money from your YouTube ads YouTube AdSense number one number two any sponsorships you have number three from linking products you can get commissions if people purchase through your links as well not saying I'm like not a shopaholic because I do feel like I am a shopaholic but I'm also doing this as a business and I've kind of made it my job to kind of go out and show you guys what's new but if yeah if you do pay attention I'm only getting maybe a couple things here and there I'm showing you a lot and I've tried a lot but I'm not buying everything I'm showing you plus I do get some like PR in which is great like I've gotten a lot more PR in recently I think next year I want to try and narrow it down a bit more but I try to be smart about shopping shopping sales making sure I'm using my cash back always doing coupons stuff like that I pretty much only have my lips left to do here so I'm kind of just answering questions but I have to do my lips and then I can't answer questions while I do this so let me quickly line these out I did get a question though from Heather asking if I were to get a regular job, what would it be? Uh, I mean, this is a regular job. Like this is a thing now. I know it seems weird, but like this is a normal thing these days and tons of people are doing it. Social media and influencing is pretty regular these days, but if I was gonna get a different job, I'd probably just go back to retail, which is what I was doing before. I don't mind working retail. I actually quite liked it. The customers can get a little annoying sometimes, but I had fun doing it. I love seeing new products coming in. I worked in clothing retail for like five years at Maurice's. I've worked at Ulta before and then the Pulse Boutique, so I'd probably go back to that. I know it doesn't pay that much, but it's just a fun job. And then to answer this again, what did you do career-wise before YouTube? I kind of just answered that. Literally, hairstylist I worked at Maurice's in the Pulse Boutique is what I've done before I won't go back to hairstyling I really hated it I thought it was something I would love to do because I enjoyed getting my hair done so much and I thought it was so interesting but I just ended up absolutely hating it but I guess my degree didn't go to waste since I'm still in the beauty field uh, this is a good one it says how do you feel about the new YouTube shorts and reels push that is happening I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I wish YouTube could just stay the same because I can't keep up with all this crap. Like, I'm trying to post TikToks, Reels, YouTube Shorts. How am I supposed to keep up with all this and upload regular long-form content? It's impossible. So I feel like I'm just repurposing the same stuff over and over. I think in the beauty space, it's going to get annoying real quick. I just feel like there's not a lot of originality in some reels. And I feel like people are just doing the same thing. And I can just see a lot of repetitiveness happening. And it's going to get even worse next year because they're going to start paying more for reels. So you're going to start seeing even more reels on your page. And I know YouTube is trying to push to do them. Um, so... Maybe your long form content isn't going to be doing as well, but I guess they're maybe going to be having ads before reels now. I don't know. Or I'm getting confused. Shorts, whatever it's called. So I'm probably going to be having to post more of those just to keep up and so my channel still gets noticed, but I hate it. I don't like that they're pushing this on people. Some people just don't want to do short form stuff. We're already doing it for Instagram and TikTok. Like, why does it all have to be the same? So the makeup look is pretty much done. Let me just zip through a few last minute questions here that we have. I did get questions if I have kids. I do not have kids. I don't think I plan on having any. I think we've kind of settled on that answer. I was a little bit unsure at first, but I think we've decided not to. And I have nothing against kids at all. I just don't think that's my journey. I don't know if that's something I want to do. I just feel like I have so much anxiety. I just don't want the extra pressure, I guess. And I feel like... It kind of sucks because society, especially where I live, it's like you get married, you have kids, and that's all people care about, it seems like. Like, I feel like whenever I go to a family function, like, I just get ignored because people only care about, like, the kids and the babies and all this stuff, and they don't really care about 
the career or what other exciting things you're doing with your life. Like I love my job and I want to focus on this. I want to travel and sometimes I do feel like, am I being selfish for this? I don't want to be alone when I'm older, but that's not really a reason that you should have kids. And it's just not really something I want for me. I can't wait to have like all the nieces and nephews. I love my niece, but yeah, I just, I don't think I want them for my own and my husband is the same way. And sometimes I feel alone in that decision, but I feel like it's becoming a little bit more common. I just, people would be a little bit more acceptable of it. I also got asked if I could live anywhere else, where would it be? I think we're planning to stay in Iowa, but we did talk about for a minute and we still do talk about it a little bit. Moving to Tennessee, we just really love it there. I love the vibes of Tennessee and I would love to live like closer to the mountains and we could do it, but I think we're both like me and my husband are we just don't want to leave I don't know I love being close to both of our families here I love Iowa it has its beauty it also has its negatives that's for sure I hate that like we don't live close to a beach or mountains that's the kind of the one drawback for me is I feel like we don't live to next to something like really beautiful and exciting it's just kind of flat here we have a lot of farmland I think it would be really hard for me to start over in a new state with no friends and family nearby I just think that would be really hard for me so I don't know even though like Tennessee is gorgeous and I could see us being there uh, we do have some land here that we plan on purchasing and eventually building like our dream home so I think we're staying in Iowa. I think we are. Okay, so I think that's all I have time for today since we are done with our makeup. You guys asked some really good ones. I may have to do another one of these, but I feel like sometimes I do get asked kind of the same questions and hopefully I was able to answer everything you guys wanted to know. If there's anything I missed that you're really curious about, let me know down below. I know some of you guys asked about certain top makeup things, certain top Bath & Byrx things, but I will do separate videos on those things here. This is just kind of a fun little about me, my life, and all that but this is our look today for the event this is kind of how I do my glam makeup and I think it turned out pretty good I'll have the products used down below but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys bye.